Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at adjusting entries. Adjusting entries are the basic component of accrual accounting. Accrual accounting is the basic for accounting. When you learn accounting gap, you have to know accrual. Adjusting entries is that those are the oxygen of accrual. So if you don't understand and if you don't know how to apply adjusting entries, you will have problems as an accounting student and you will have major problem as a CPA candidate. So in this session, I will go over different type of adjusting entries, explaining those concepts briefly and working this example. Now, most likely, if you are watching this recording, you are either a student taken an accounting course or an accounting major or a CPA candidate. I cannot, I cannot emphasize this enough. It's extremely important that you are comfortable with adjusting entries because once you know how to do adjusting entries, you understand the four types, how, how adjusting entries are affected, uh, which accounts do they affect on the balance sheet, which account do they affect on the income statement, then you will have relatively easier time understanding more advanced topic. But if you don't understand adjusting entries, you're gonna carry that weakness throughout your accounting career all the way to getting your CPA exam. Now, if you're a CPA candidate, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. I can be a useful addition. I don't replace your CPA review course. What I teach you is the basics. What I teach you is something different than your CPA review course. So that's why I, 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 I consider myself as a supplement because CPA review courses, they assume you know adjustments. You may or may not know adjustments, or if you didn't know it in the past, you may forgot how to do adjustments. Therefore, by explaining the material better, I can add 10 to 15 points to your CPA review score. Your risk with me is one month of subscription. Your potential return is passing your exam. And if not for any, if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well your university is doing on the CPA exam. I do have financial accounting courses, material, intermediate accounting, as well as other courses. So in addition to the lecture, I have additional resources like practice exercises, multiple choice, true, false. I strongly suggest you take a look at my website. Also on LinkedIn, connect with me and take a look at the students that use my system to succeed on the CPA exam. Please like this recording on YouTube, share it, connect with me on, Insta on Instagram and Facebook. So let's take a look at this exercise. Now, the first thing you want to know about adjusting entries, we have four types, four types. I'm not sure if we're gonna go over all four types in this example, but every time I go through a type, once you understand the type, it's easier to deal with the journal entry. So let's take a look at the first example and see what type is it. And we'll go over them. Now, on, on farhatlectures.com, I have a detailed explanation about adjusting entries. This is just an exercise, but I will try to explain the concepts as well briefly, though. A three-year fire insurance policy was purchased on July 1st, 2021 for 12240 The company debited insurance expense for the entire amount. Okay. First, Let's journalize the entry, which I, which I call basic, a basic journal entry when this event occurred. So this event occurred, and by the way, we're doing everything as of December 31st. So all the adjusting entries, we're assuming the year end is December 31st. So on July 1st, this is what happened on July 1st. We bought the policy and we debited insurance expense for the entire amount and we credited cash for the entire amount, obviously. So this is a basic journal entry. You purchased an insurance policy and you debited for and you debited insurance expense. Now, this is when you when you bought this policy, the assumption here is you're gonna consume this policy by the end of the year. Well, that's not really true. Okay. So basically, this you could consider this an error or you can consider it as a, you know, a temporary a journal entry until we make the adjustment, okay? But this is not the proper way to journalize what, what happened on July 1st. What happened on July 1st, we purchased a prepaid because the prepaid is for three year. Now, if the insurance policy was for six months and our year end is uh, uh, July, August, September, October, November, December, okay, six months, and our year end is December 31st, it would have been okay to debit the expense, but that's not the case. So now we have to fix this error. We have to fix this error, or again, rather than an error, let's call it an adjustment. The first thing is you want to know what type of adjustments are you making here? This is called a prepaid, prepaid adjustment. Prepaid, you are adjusting prepaid. This is a prepaid adjustment. How do you 
how, how are we going to fix this adjustment? Well, let's think about it. So let's look from a T account perspective. We have insurance expense and we have in there 12,240. Now we have to find out how much the actual insurance expense should be. So simply put, we have to reduce our insurance expense. We did not use up all the policy. The policy is for three years. Well, let's do this. If let's get our calculators ready. So here's our calculator and we purchased we paid 12,240 and we're going to divide this policy by 36 months. Why? Because it's for three years. So our monthly insurance expense is $340. How did I know this again? It's three years and the, the cost. So let me do it again, 12,000. So you know this, okay, divided by 36 months equal to 340. Now the only expense that should be here is for July, August, September, October, November, and, and December. So therefore, we're going to take this amount, multiply it by six, multiply it by six, and that's going to give us $2,040. That's the amount that should be here in insurance expense, 2040 What does that mean? It means we have to back out of expense. We have to credit expense. We have to back out of expense. The amount that's going to give us 2040 well how do we do this well we have 12 we are recording right now 12240 of expense which is incorrect we're gonna deduct from it 2040 and we have to back out 10200 so this is part of the entry this is the credit for every credit we have to have a debit we're gonna take it out of insurance expense and we're gonna put it into you guessed it prepaid insurance which is an asset prepaid insurance which is an asset therefore I'm going to debit my prepaid insurance expense 10,200 my prepaid insurance balance is 10,200 therefore I debit prepaid insurance 10,200 and I removed it out of insurance expense 10,200 because the only expense I need to record I need to record is only $2,040 for July for the year 2021 from July 1st till December 31st. Now, the way they did this entry, it's a little bit kind of from the beginning, they, they, they shouldn't have debited insurance expense. The way they should have done this, and let me show you how should they have done this, just this way you know, you understand, because the information could be given to you in two different ways. Okay, let's assume they did it properly. Let's assume they journalized the entry properly. If they, if they, if they did journalize the entry properly, they would have debited prepaid insurance, 12,240 credited cash 12,240 so I'm just telling you if they did it properly it should have been something like this on July 1st this should have been July 1st rather than this entry okay then by December 31st what should have they done is debited insurance expense 2,040 and credited prepaid insurance 2040 this is this is if they did it right from the beginning right from the beginning they should have had a prepaid rather than insurance expense but at the end of the day the same thing happened what do i mean by the same thing let me erase this to show you that from a t account perspective the same thing happened so from a t account notice starting with insurance expense we only have 2040 2040 2040 that's the balance notice 2040 prepaid insurance prepaid insurance we started with 12240 reduced it by 2040 we end up with 10200 same thing 10200 but this is the proper way this this is the proper way of recording the prepaid as a prepaid Okay, so this is a prepaid adjustment usually if it's recorded properly we increase an expense and we reduce an asset if it's recorded properly from the beginning. So when you adjust the prepaid, you are bringing the prepaid down and you are increasing the related expense. Now remember, every adjusting entry will affect a balance sheet account and an income statement account. So notice here, this is the adjusting entry right here. An income statement account went up, a balance sheet went down. An income statement and a balance sheet. Okay, let's erase all of this and move on to the 
Next, next adjustment, next adjustment. Depreciation on the equipment, total 12,250. Hopefully you should memorize this by heart when you book depreciation. It's depreciation expense, accumulated depreciation. Notice, depreciation expense is an income statement. It went up. Accumulated depreciation is a balance sheet. It also went up. They both went up. Remember, we affect the balance sheet account and an income statement account. Remember, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account is a contra asset account it goes on the balance sheet so make sure you know this by heart i mean you get a depreciation entry on your exam whether it's the cpa or your classroom make sure you you memorize it depreciation expense is a debit it's an expense on the income statement accumulated depreciation is a contra asset reduces the asset that is depreciating whatever that asset is make sure you know that and this is also a prepaid a form of prepaid okay prepaid adjustment notice in a prepaid adjustment you increase an expense and you reduce an asset i'm sorry this was not the proper way because it was not done the proper way but that's what we did actually you increase an expense and usually you reduce an asset let's take a look at number three employee salaries of sixteen thousand five hundred for the month of december will be paid in early january 2022 translation well the employee earned the money but we will not be paying them till January. What does that mean from an accounting perspective? It means we have an expense, and that, that expense is called accrued expense. Accrued expense is another type of adjusting entries, another type. So this is the second type. We said prepaid is one type, accrued expense in the other. Accrued expenses, we always debit an expense and credit the related liability, related payable. Here, what we're doing is we are accruing. We are we are recording, accruing means recording, expenses for salaries. So what do we do? We debit salaries, expense, and we credit salaries payable, salaries liability. So this is a form of, what, do, what did we say? We, this is called accrued expenses. Always accrued expenses. You increase an expense and you increase a liability. Notice an income statement account is the expense. A liability is a balance sheet. Notice when we do adjusting entries, we don't touch the cash unless we are adjusting, we are doing uh, adjusting entries for the bank for the bank reconciliation. Then we will involve cash. Otherwise, generally speaking, adjusting entries will not involve cash. Will not involve cash. This is another type. This is an accrued expense. Let's take a look at the fourth entry. On November first, the company borrowed. 190,000 from a bank. The note requires principal and interest at 12% to be paid April 30th, 2022. All right, good. So let's first uh, prepare the journal entry when the transaction took place. The transaction took place November 1st. Therefore, on November 1st, we are going to debit. Let, let, let's do this from the beginning. We are going to debit cash. 190,000. I'm going to credit notes payable 190,000. Didn't you say we don't involve cash? Yes, this is not the adjusting entry. This is November 1st. The adjusting entry happened on December 31st. Now, here's what happened. On a timeline, let me show you on a timeline what's going on here. Let me make this in red. On a timeline, we have the following, are, the following took place. We borrowed the money November 1st, which is, this is the journal entry for it. Then we're going to have to make an adjusting entry December 31st. Then we are going to pay off the loan April 30th. Okay, so this is what happened. First, we did this entry. Now from November 1st till December 31st, we have all of November and all of December, the, the, the loan accrued interest for two months. Well, what we have to do is we have to uh, compute the interest. It's 190,000 times 2 divided by 12 times 12%. 12 Let's do this on a calculator here. 2 divided by 12. Let's get the fraction first. Times 190,000 times 0 0.12, 12%, and that's 3,800. 3,000. 800. So this is the interest expense that we have to accrue. Again, what type of adjusting entry? Accrued expense. What do we do under accrued expense? We are going to debit an expense and credit the related liability. Therefore, we are going to debit interest expense 3,800 
credit accrued uh, credit the liability 3800 so this is the adjusting entry so this is on december 31st now on april 30th when we make the payment on april 30th when we make the payment um let's do the payment anyhow although it's not it's not required in this exercise but let's do the payment so we did november 1st we took out the loan we make the adjusting entry now we're going to make the payment april 30th on april 30th here's what we have to do on april 30th we are going to so we have six months so we're going to be six months it's so first we have to compute how much interest we are going to pay One hundred and ninety thousand times six twelve times 12%. It's going to give us the total interest. So 0.5 is 612. Oops, let me clear this. 0 0.5 times 190,000 for the loan. 190,000 times 0.12. So the total interest we have to pay is 11,400. Let's journalize the entry. So now on April 30th, April 30th, we have to pay cash in total. We have to pay cash in total 190,000 plus 11,400 plus 190,000. We have to pay in cash 201,400. Well, part of it, it's going to be for the note. We're going to have to debit the note 190,000. Okay. Then, remember, we have to remove the interest payable. Notice here we have an interest payable. We said we owe the bank 3800 Now we pay it. We have to debit interest payable 3800 Now we still have it. doesn't balance. Now we have to record the expense that took place from, this, from January 1st till, uh, till April 1st. Uh, 30th okay well the difference is 11,400 minus 3,800 because the total interest was 11,400 so let's do it that way 11,400 minus 3,800 and that's the amount of interest expense interest expense and that's going to be 7,600 okay now also if you want to do this you can take 190,000 times 4 divided by 12 times 12%, 12 it should give you 7,600, the amount of interest for this period. But I just took the total interest and back out the interest that we already recorded for this period, which is November and December. Right? So this is, again, an accrued interest journal entry, but I went further and I paid off the loan. This way I showed you how it all works. Okay, let's work another adjusting entry. Five, on December 1st, the company received $6,000 in cash from another company that's renting office in Adams Building. The payment representing rent for December, January, February. It was credited to the third rent revenue. At least they did it right. Okay, so on December 1st, 12-1, we received $6,000 in cash. Good. We debit cash $6,000 and we credit. They said here they credited the third revenue and this is what they should have done the third rent revenue and in your textbook it might be called unearned revenue that's fine six thousand this is the third type of adjusting entries unearned revenue okay this is unearned revenue it means you receive the money but you haven't earned it yet and they did it properly as of december 1st they debited cash credited the third rent revenue now december 31st twelve thirty one. From December 1st till December 31st, I earned one month of revenue. Well, they gave me 6000 for three months. Therefore, I earned 2000 What I do on December 31st, I debit this account. I start to reduce this account. The third rent revenue, 2000 And I will credit rent. I start to, to, to count the revenue, 2000 Therefore, this is the adjusting entry right here. Now, from a T account perspective my deferred rent revenue i had six thousand initially i reduced it by two i still have four thousand and this is for the month of january and february which i'm going to have to earn later on when i earn i do the same journal entry this is a unearned revenue and unearned revenue if it's booked properly debiting cash credited rent revenue you will reduce you will you would reduce the liability and you will increase revenue 
Okay, this is unearned revenue. And the reason I said if it's booked properly, because what could have done is this, they could have debited cash and credited rent revenue, which would not be correct, then, you, then the adjusting entry will be different. Okay, but they did it properly. Let's look at transaction six. On December 1st, the company received $6,000 in cash from, an, uh, from another company that's renting office space in Adams Building. The payment was credited to rent revenue. Oh, okay, good. So now, kind of, we we did not book the we did not book the we did not book the transaction properly. So here's what happened now: we debited cash six thousand on December first, and we credited rent revenue. Now you should know what we need to do. We need to take out four thousand out of rent revenue. Make it so. Simply put, this 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 happened on December December first. They did it incorrectly. Okay, so what do we have to do now on December 31st? We have to take out of rent revenue 4,000 because we haven't earned it yet. We only earned 2,000 and put it into unearned revenue. Therefore, I'm going to debit rent revenue for 4,000 and I'm going to credit the third rent revenue for another 4,000. Simply put, here's what happened. Uh, this is rent revenue. So initially I had 6,000 in, in rent revenue. I'm going to debit it for, and my rent revenue is only 2,000 for the month of December for rent revenue. For deferred rent revenue, for the deferred rent revenue, I did not have anything. Then I need to put in 4,000, and I should have a balance. Let me just move it up a little bit further. Okay, so for the deferred rent revenue, and this is a liability, I had nothing, then I booked 4,000, therefore I still have 4,000 for January and February. Back to what I'm supposed to have, 2,000 only of revenue for 2021 and 4,000 of unearned revenue for January and February of 2022. So notice I'm back to exactly what I want to be. So notice number five is the correct uh, proper proper way to do it okay now the only the only adjustment we did not work is an adjustment called accrued revenue and accrued revenue you debit a receivable and you credit revenue this is the adjustment anyway as i mentioned earlier you can go to my website to uh to uh, to 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 look at more adjusting entries and explain and, and learn how to do adjusting entries. It's critical. It's extremely important that you understand this topic inside out, whether you are an accounting student or most importantly, a CPA candidate. All what I'm asking you is give me a chance for a month to help you. I can help you understand accounting, be successful. It's a long-term investment. Invest in yourself. Stay safe until we get those vaccines. Good luck.